and over the universe. For our God reigns. Our God reigns and reigns supremely. Yes, that's why the Bible tells us, our God changed not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is the same. Can we shout a praise to the Lord our God, everybody? Can we shout another praise to the Lord our God, everybody? Can we just bless the name of the Lord one more time, everybody? Let's lift our voices and shout hallelujah to the Lord our God, who lives and reigns forever and forever. He is our, our God, and we celebrate Him this morning, Jesus Christ, the Lord of God. Will you stand with me, everybody, if you can? Jesus. Stand with me, everybody. We can't oversee. We can't sing too many times the fact that our God made a way. He made a way. Lord, we truly appreciate you this morning. We come to you, Lord, with our 
with our weaknesses and our falling. We come to you without failure. We come to you, God, with our sins. For you are the only one who can forgive sins. And we come acknowledging all weaknesses and failure. But Lord, we thank you for the cleansing blood of Calvary that washes our sins of God away. Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Lord, we bless your wonderful name. Here we gather in your house this morning and in our homes across this world. Lord, to give you praise and worship and glory. We pray that the words of our mouth this morning and the meditations of our heart, Lord, will be acceptable in thy sight. We pray that your presence will be with us to inspire us, to challenge us, to motivate us. Oh God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, we just bless your wonderful and glorious name. Minister to us today. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. Grant us insight and understanding into your word. Grant us revelation. Oh God, we pray this morning that you may heal the sick. Oh God, God, deliver the oppressor. Remember us as a nation. Remember Jamaica land we love. Oh God, remember those who come on the prayer of our country. This morning we commend them into the hand of the Lord and pray for the wisdom of God upon their life. Lord, we give ourselves to the Lord our God today. Today we say all to Jesus we surrender and all to him we freely give. Lord, we will ever love and trust you and in your presence daily we want to live. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings upon us today as we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Can everybody shout a praise to the Lord? Can we just shout a more praise to the Lord, everybody? Can we shout a more praise to Jesus, everybody? Wherever you are, in your homes, wherever you are, why don't you join us in worship now as we sing praises to God? The Apache must come to lead us.
King of glory. We join with the songwriter, Lord, as we say our sweetness to hold the new world day and feel the pride and warmth it brings. But better yet, this calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because Christ lives, all our fears are gone. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. This child can face uncertain days because our Savior lives. Father, we exalt you this morning as the sovereign one. You, Lord, who appeared to John in Revelation 1 and said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and hell. Lord, what a day is to lift up your holy name. Your imposters rejoiced on Friday because they said, Finally, oh God, we have gotten rid of the Messiah. But Sunday morning came, and up from the grave you arose with a mighty triumph over your foes. You arose a victor from the dark domains. And we rejoice this morning because you live forever with the saints to reign. You are king over our lives and we exalt you. You are king over the universe and we praise you. Isaiah, Daniel and Ezekiel prophesied that of the increase of your kingdom and government there shall be no end. And Lord, we exalt you as the sovereign king this morning. Lord, we pray that you may stand in the midst of all that is happening across this universe. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. World leaders are bowing down before you. You have got the attention of the entire universe. And men and women and boys and girls are understanding and are being reminded that there is a God who reigns sovereign and supreme. And Father, we call upon your name this morning and we ask you for mercy. Oh God, we admit that we have sinned. We admit that we have done wrong. We admit that we have not walked according to your words. And we are deserving of your judgment. But Lord, we call upon you for your mercies. Lord, we pray that you may stretch forth your mighty hand in the midst of our nation, in the midst of our families. Oh God, across this universe, may you stretch forth your hand of mercy. Lord, we pray for those who are fearful, those who are distressed. Oh God, those who are infected with this deadly coronavirus. Those, oh God, who are seeking for hope in the midst of despair and darkness. Lord, we pray that the resurrected King of Calvary, oh God, will shine forth with you. Oh God, will light in the midst of our darkness. Oh God, we pray that you destroy every plan of the adversary. And we pray for a mighty revival, a mighty renewal across this land and across the universe. Oh God, we pray right now for Jamaica land we love. Oh God, we pray, turn on Father, that you will bless our land. Have mercy upon us, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you minister to our leaders, our prime minister, the members of his cabinet, the minister of health, our security forces, those, oh God, who are distressed, our citizens, oh God, the Christians across this land. May you, Lord, give us boldness because you have said in your word, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you have given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, Lord, we pray for healing across this land. We pray for deliverance across this land from the east and the west, from the north and the south. We pray that the spirit of God will bring renewal and freshness. Cause a new day to dawn, oh God, in this land. Cause a new day to dawn across the Caribbean. Cause a new day to dawn across the universe. And may our world never be the same again. Because the Almighty God is shaking everything that can be shaken. Oh God, I will look to you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Resurrected Savior, reign in our hearts and our lives. Resurrected King, reign in every home. Hallelujah. Reign, oh God, in every condition. Oh God, where sickness exists, we pray healing. 
Oh God, where fear exists, we declare boldness. Oh God, where the enemies reek in other, we declare the delivering power of the Almighty God. Cause someone, oh God, to raise up in power and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to declare the same God and to bring hope and cheer across this land and across this world. We worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that the stone was rolled away. Oh God, we thank you that you are no longer in the grave, but you are reigning, oh God, in our hearts. And you are reigning across this universe. And you are setting up a kingdom, actively setting up a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. It's an everlasting kingdom that the lion of the tribe of Judah shall reign over. And so, Lord, we give you praise. And honor and glory, we exalt you as the king of the universe. Kings and kingdoms shall before you fall, and the entire universe shall soon know who is king when you come. Resurrected Savior, we worship you. Speak to the hearts of your people through your servant today, O God, and let your name be glorified. We are so honored, Lord, that we can pray this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. He who died but rose again triumphantly. Hallelujah. And now sits at the right hand of the Father in glory. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the church of God says amen. amen. And the church of God says amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and give God praise. Because he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. So we pray. The meditation for today comes from the book of St. Mark, chapter 16, from verse 9 to verse 16. I will read and then our host pastor, Reverend Dr. Osborne Fisher, will deliver God's word for this hour. St. Mark, chapter 16, from verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, and that he had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto them, unto two of them, and they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, Neither believed they them. Afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. This is the word of the Lord, and we say, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning, And I greet like you, Amen, in those old family, Jamaican family, and brothers and sisters across the world, I like greet you. I give you the wonderful name and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We go to the word of the Lord from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Amen. We are at verse 9. Amen. Let us upstairs if you can. Verse 9 from St. Mark's Gospel as we go to the word of the Lord. And we ask Heavenly Father to bless thy word unto our hearts today. Lord, and to glorify your name. Speak to us in these moments, Heavenly Father. Word of hope, word of healing, word of deliverance. Lord, a word that will change and transform our lives. Lord, insight and revelation we pray for today. Understanding and wisdom of God. Lord, we give ourselves to you and we thank you in this hour. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Everybody say, Amen, amen and Amen and Amen. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, we are verse 16. Maybe brothers and sisters, maybe some almost 20 years ago, maybe almost 20 years ago, 
I was I was writing a little booklet. And while I was writing this booklet, I, I wrote about two pages of what I consider my philosophy of life, my philosophy of, of leadership. And, and, I, and I wrote it in the form of what I call I believe statement. So I had about 20, 25 statements. I all begin with the words I, I believe. I believe statement. This morning, brothers and sisters, I want to use our thought for reflection this morning. I believe. Do you believe? So I want to make a statement and I want to ask a question. I believe. Do you believe? Do you believe yes. that Jesus has been resurrected and he came up from the grave? I assure you this morning that with all of my heart, with all of my energy and strength, I truly believe that Jesus Christ has been resurrected from the dead and he is alive. Do you believe? And so we go to our reflection on the word, the word of the Lord. The resurrection, my brothers and sisters. Yes, the resurrection is about the celebrating Amen. And the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, arose from the dead. Christ arose from the dead. Yes, Jesus Christ arose from the dead. Christianity, my brothers and sisters, amen, rises or fall on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul said, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our preaching is vain, our teaching is vain, our living is vain without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus, amen, amen, is the most important message Amen. In human history, there is no other message that is as important as the resurrection of Jesus Christ throughout all history. The resurrection, his resurrection, brothers and sisters, separate, separate him, the Lord Jesus Christ, from all other religious leaders. Yes, his resurrection, amen, create a distinction between Jesus Christ and all other religious leaders. For understand and know, no other religious leader, no other religious leader claim to have conquered death. The only religious leader who claimed to have conquered death is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Can we give him a praise everybody? His name is Jesus. Yes. He died on, on the cross. We celebrated that on Friday. But my brothers and sisters, he was buried. Oh yes, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Yes, but thanks be to God. He rose. He rose triumphantly. He rose victoriously. Amen. The tomb he occupied is now empty. Jesus is alive. Hear me say, Jesus is alive. Oh God, John wrote, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead and now I am alive forevermore. Our God is alive. Jesus is alive. And he reigns supremely. He is alive. Oh yes. 
He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, what Jesus is alive. Oh, the songwriter said, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his soul. He arose a victor from the dark domain. Let's surrender with the same serenity. Oh, yes, he arose. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ arose from the dead. And today we gather across this world to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. He arose from the dead. Oh, God. And we bless his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name. He arose. My brothers and my sisters, his death on the cross, his death on the cross, amen. Oh God, and the shame of his blood has washed away our sins, made a provision for our sins to be washed away. Amen. Understand. Only the blood of Jesus could have washed our sins away, cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered anymore. For the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Thank God that he died on the cross. Oh God. Oh God. He was buried. For Jesus being buried symbolized to us that our sins like what have been buried by brothers and sisters, by the Lord Jesus Christ. With the shedding of blood, he carried our sin and buried our sin. And that's why today we can celebrate the forgiveness of sin to Jesus Christ our Lord in the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered anymore. Our sins have been buried. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Yes, he died and he was buried. Oh God, oh yes. And he carried our sins, my brothers and sisters. Yes, he yes. carried our sins and God had washed our sins away. We'll never, and that's not, remember our sins, but they are, for they are all under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, and as you think about it and reflect, each resurrection tells us, tells us, brothers and sisters, yes, that the same power that raised up Jesus from the grave is that same power that is inside of us as God placed his spirit in our life. That same power that brought him up from the grave, that same power now abides within us. Oh God, is that same power that keeps us free from sin and anticipating the coming of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we just give the Lord one more shout of praise in the body? We go to our text, my brothers and sisters. And our text suggests to us and tells us that Jesus was resurrected, came out from the grave. And as he came out from the grave, some people believed. Others did not believe that he was alive. Some believed, others did not believe that he was alive. Yes, others dealt it in St. Mark's Gospel. We go there now. Chapter 16, 9 to 14. Outlined for us three sets of persons that Jesus appeared to. If we read the text in verse 9, it says, 
Now, when Jesus, amen, was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of which he had cast seven devils. That's verse 9. But read a little bit more. Verse 10 suggests to us. And she, Mary Magdalene, yes, and she went and told them, them that had been with him, oh good God, them that had been with him, oh God, she went and told them, oh God, oh God, as they mourned and wept, but read verse 11, it says, And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, the Bible says, they believe not. I ask you the question again, do you believe? The Bible says, Mary Magdalene went and told who? She went and told a special set of persons. The people she went to are individuals who were mourning and weeping over the death of Jesus. The people she went to were individuals who had been with Jesus, who walked with Jesus, who were over in the company of Jesus. She went to them and told them, he is alive. And the Bible said, they believe not. They believe not. Oh God. She told them, all of these people, my brothers and sisters, can I tell you that these people that she went to, they, they were the same people that saw Jesus heal the sick. They saw Jesus cleanse the leper. They saw Jesus open the eyes of the blind. They saw Jesus causing the lame to walk. They saw Jesus feeding the multitude. But the Bible said, when Mary Magdalene came to them, the Bible said, they believed not. Don't and fear and fill their part and they did not believe. My question to us today, do you, do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is resurrected from the dead? Do you believe that he's alive? Why don't you shout a pray to the Lord our God in the body? He is alive. is resurrected and that he is alive. Oh God. They saw him but they doubted. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. When they got the report from Mary Bible says they did not believe. Let's go to the second set of person. We are at verse. We are reading the text. Brothers and sisters, let's move on to verse 12. And what's the progression now? He appeared to Mary Magdalene. In verse 12, the Bible says to us, After that, he appeared. Amen. He appeared. Oh God, in another form. Unto two. Two. Amen. Two of them. Amen. As, as they walked and went into, into the country. Oh God. The Bible says Jesus appeared to them. Verse 13 says, Amen. And they went and told it unto, unto, oh God, the residue, the remnant. They those that believe and they close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that walk with him to pile up judgment call. Those that walk and stood afar off as he went to the cross. Oh God, they went and told it to the residue. 
the Bible says, neither believe they, oh God. They, the residue, did not believe. Dear brother and sister, they walked with him to get to the garden. They walked with him as far off into Pilate's judgment hall. They walked with him to Calvary, standing afar off. Oh God, they have heard Jesus said that he would destroy this body and raise it up in three days. But the Bible said when they got the message and the report, oh God, that he was alive, the Bible said they believe not. Today, 
give me my brothers and sisters. Both groups go to church. Both groups that gathered in the car, in the living room, wherever across this world, listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who believe and those who do not believe. No, yet. No, God. No, yet. Both groups. Hey, amen. Both groups, my brothers and sisters. So when we read the text and we try our very best to understand a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. And try to put it in its context as best as we can. We made some of these statements that coming to church does not make us a believer. Singing on the choir does not make us a believer. Preaching Jesus does not make us a believer. Brothers and sisters, what is it that makes us a believer? We must believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. That's what made us a believer. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes, that's what made us a believer. Oh God. That's why the Philippian jailer, when he asked the question, what must I do to be saved? The response was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Jesus came to us, preaching, oh God, one simple message. What was the message of Jesus from the book of Mark, Matthew, oh God and Luke, the message of Jesus was repent and believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved for access, there's no other name in the earth whereby a man might be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ, my question to you this morning, do you believe in the death? Burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe? Oh God. Do you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Oh God. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, when we read the text, oh God, and we reflect, we can go. To our favorite verse in the Bible. Maybe everybody, maybe everybody in Jamaica knows this verse. It is John 3 and verse 16. Let me upstairs, John 3 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever do what? Come with me now. Whosoever what? Believe in him should not perish, but will have what? Everlasting life. Yes, whosoever believes, yes, yes, should have everlasting life. Yes. So, my brothers and my sisters, as we observe this verse, no, the Bible said, whosoever believeth, it presupposes that there are some that will not believe. Whosoever will make the choice to believe, the Bible said, they will not perish, but they will have eternal life to live with Jesus forever and forever for eternity. Eternal life begins now. We begin to have eternal life on earth once we ask Jesus 
to fulfill our sin and we believe in the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ eternal life begin. So the Bible says John 3 16 who said that the leave it on him shall not perish but shall have an everlasting life. Whoever believe oh, will not be killed but to have eternal life. But read a little bit more in St. John chapter 3. Flip over to verse 18. Look at what verse 18 says. Verse 18 of St. John's Gospel chapter 3 suggests something like this. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed. Oh God, oh God. So, he that believeth from the Lord has eternal life. They are one side. In one part of the Bible, the Bible called them sheep. He that believeth not is on the other side. The Bible says they are condemned. Another part of the Bible call them goats. Yeah. So you are sheep and goat, believers and unbelievers, condemned and not condemned. Come with me, brother, sister. Let's talk a little Bible. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now what? No condemnation to them who are what? In Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Can somebody lift your hand and shout a prayer to Jehovah God? For you are in Christ. You are eternal life. You are not condemned. Oh, but come with me. Hallelujah. Oh God. But some are described as being condemned. And by implication, we must put some, some more flesh to that. So let's skip over to verse 36 of St. John chapter 3. And it says, He that believeth on the Son at everlasting life. Yeah. He that believeth not shall not see life. But, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Yeah. The Bible says, they that believe not have the wrath of God upon them. They are condemned, condemned to hell, to hell, fire, and brimstone, condemned to the judgment and to the wrath of the Lord our God. Yes, condemned to be without God and Christ. They are sentenced to hell. To be sentenced to hell is to be condemned. To be condemned is to be sentenced to hell. Oh God is to have hellish attitude. Living a life destined for hell and for the wrath and the judgment of God. Oh my brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus Christ. You are condemning yourself to the wrath of God, to the judgment of God, to hell. So many people in our world today are living a hellish life, demonstrating a hellish attitude. Oh, my brother, oh, hear me say to you this very morning, this very resurrection morning, I have one. And it's like 
lifestyle and a condemned lifestyle. And identify with the resurrected God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody just want to pray for the Lord of God? Oh, yes, my brother, sister, there is a God who is alive. Oh, God. And comes to give us life. Life abundant. Comes to give us abundant life. Whoever comes to him, he will change. He wants to give us abundant life. He wants to give us eternal life. Yes, he wants to give us purpose. Yes, he wants to give us the anointing. He wants to change our life. Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Those things have passed away. All things become new. He wants to give us purpose and direction and a reason for living. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one and the only one who can change and transform our life into a new creature. Oh God, somebody just give the Lord one more shout of prayer. He can make a new creation out of us. Oh, his name is Jesus. Yeah. His name is Jesus. It is that gives us joy. It is that gives us peace. He is that gives us grace. His name is Jesus. It is that gives us hope. My brothers and sisters, his name is Jesus. Some he says that I call this somewhere. Some writer says, when it comes to our heart, he makes me laugh. He makes me cry. Set my sinful soul and fire. Hallelujah. When God did the pen of love in my heart, it brings joy and gladness. Laughter makes me cry sometimes. I'm not crying because of sadness. I'm crying because of joy. My brother, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, will give us peace, life, abundance. We got to put our faith and trust in the Lord, our God. Oh, yes! My brother, sister, our faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Our faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Oh, man. So many persons today misunderstand, misunderstand why people are going to hell. People are not going to hell. People are not going to hell because of sin. People are going to hell because they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because they do not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's why people are going to hell. They did not, they abandoned that book and they say, away to Jesus. They have no power but work with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why people are going to hell. For Jesus promised to wash our sins away. People are not going to hell because of sin. They are going to hell because they have rejected the Lordship of Jesus Christ over their life. Yeah. That's why people are going to hell. That's why I asked the question this morning. Oh, one more time. Let me ask the question. Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? On the resurrected Lord that he was crucified?
the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. Hear me, the Bible said, we must turn to the Lord our God. Change our mindset and come to Jehovah God who will give us hope and deliverance. My brothers and sisters, people turn all kinds of things. The Bible said we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Because, because when they knew God, they could find not as God, but they were paid in their imagination. The Bible said, God has turned the world to the reprobate mind, coming all kind of abomination and sinful death. Hear me, my brother, sister. Oh, yeah. Because when they knew God, they served him not as God. They could get hard and become hard and tough and rebellious to the Almighty God. Hear me say to us, people have given themselves over all kind of spiritism. Yes. So they go to the psychic and they go to the palm reader. Some practice witchcraft and all kind of all kind of so-called spiritism rather than acknowledging the true God can sin the Lord Jesus Christ with full pardon for sin. Oh, hear me say to us this very day. Do you believe in the death burial? and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus rebuked them for the hardness of heart. The challenge for us, we must call upon Jehovah God. We must call upon the rock of ages. We must call upon him. He said, call and I will answer. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. We must call upon God. But my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray. Seek my faith. Hear God say, Hear from heaven, but in their sins, and be here not. We must call upon the resurrected Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Shout another pray for the Lord our God. Shout another pray for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Some people and some are getting weary. Oh, yes, weary to hear about spirituality. Some are you very glad this morning that they're not at church. So, Pastor can't sleep for some of them sleeping. Because I kind of see some sleeping in their living room. God has said, This preaching here, Pastor, I preached this morning. It's not for me, it's you who preach it for. Wake up, you sleeper. <laughs> Oh yeah. Come on, oh God, and repent. Turn to God and have some appetite for the things of God. Have some appetite for the word of God. Let me preach and the Bible for five more minutes and come on home now. Oh yes. Jesus rebuked them for the hardness of heart. And Jesus also rebuked them secondly for their own. Believe. Unbelief. Yeah. What is unbelief? Unbelief, my brothers and sisters, speaks of unfaithfulness. Unbelief speaks of inability to believe the truth. Inability to believe the truth. It speaks of a lack of trust, you know, a lack of trust. It is a lack of of confidence. It speaks of disbelief, lack of confidence and assurance. Yes, that's unbelief. The Bible said in St. Mark's Gospel. In St. Mark's Gospel, the Bible said that Jesus went to a city called Capernaum. Sometimes described as his hometown. But the Bible said Jesus could not do much miracles in Capernaum. Why? Because of their what? On belief, he could not do much miracles because of their on belief. Yes, on belief, they did not trust it in the Lord our God. Yes, on belief. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 
Oh God, and the verse is there. Tell us about faith in the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. But in the end, let's obtain a good report. Listen to the book of Hebrews. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that what? That diligently seek him. It is faith in God. We must believe the Lord. If we pray for a miracle and we don't get the miracle, there's nothing wrong with God. It's our faith. We must have faith and trust and confidence and faithfulness and believe in the Lord our God. The question is, do you believe? Do you believe? I believe. Oh God, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, my brothers and sisters, we must believe, we must believe, we must believe. 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 We must believe in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we say to you this morning, we must believe that God will make a way. Here we talk to this nation and everybody across this world. We must believe that God will make a way when they see us to be no way. When your back are against the wall, rivers surround you, mountains are in our sight. We must believe that there is a God that will make a way to the sun and say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. I believe there's a Jesus that was buried in the grave. I believe. 